All right, as promised, we're going to talk today about air admittance valve. Like I said in the other video, it's one of the more controversial things as plumbers we have in our industry. A lot of people love them. Some people hate them. I'm going to take a minute and talk a little bit about how they're used in North Carolina, talk a little bit about how they work. Interesting fact about air admittance valves. They came up with the idea for air admittance valves in Northern Europe to help combat the fact that they had so much snow on the roofs, it was clogging up their vents a lot. So this was invented in the northern part of Sweden, I think it was. Okay, so here's an air admittance valve by Studervent, the IPS Corporation, they make these. Um, I like this brand, I use them a lot. Studervent's or air admittance valves in general are made with a rubber diaphragm in there that when negative pressure is felt in the pipe system, the diaphragm drops and turn lets air in, but anytime any kind of positive pressure, any kind of pressure pushes back on it, it pushes it up and closes as to not let sewer gas in the house. That's how they work. One of the other things that Studervent makes, or the IPS Corporation makes, is these recessed boxes. I've used these all the time. If you look back at some of the videos I've got, you can see these in the walls where I use them. Um, but it's a really good way to install these. It gets a nice trim cover right here that goes on and makes it look really nice on the final. But um, these go really well with the Studervent. All right, so let's take a look at how they're used in a typical three-fixture bathroom group. All right, so just take a look at this bathroom group that we have here. We've got the toilet, the shower, and the lab, like I've shown before in some of the videos. Instead of this vent, which goes through the roof a lot of times, or this can be the vent that goes through the roof, you can put an air admittance valve on it. If it's in the wall, you can put one of the boxes that I showed you on it like this. They can either be strapped to the studs by these two tabs, or you can buy a metal bar that goes across that's pretty convenient to nail them to the studs. And then afterwards, with, you can screw the air admittance valve in there on the final. They do come, this box does come with a test cap in it, which is pretty convenient. Always make sure and follow the drainage fixture unit chart that comes with whatever air admittance valve that you have. This one is a Studer vent. So I know that I have three with the toilet, two with the shower, and one with the lavatory. So that's six, so I know that I'm good. The other thing about air admittance valves is that you have to have at least four inches from where the drain on the lavatory connects and where the studer vent connects us. So make sure you like leave yourself four inches there, that distance. All right, another aspect of air admittance valve that I want to talk about. I put a 90 on this three inch horizontal branch right here as if we were going down or coming up from a slab or coming up to another floor level right here. So keep this in mind, when you're using air admittance valves, let's say you're up here, you've got a bathroom like this on a second or third floor, even if you tee off and you go or Y off and go to another bathroom and you're using multiple air admittance valves on that level. When you come up on a stack, at least one of those air admittance valves on that floor level has to come up at least six inches above the flood level rim of the highest fixture. Here in North Carolina, you're permitted to use air admittance valves in almost every part of your plumbing system. You can use them on your laundry. You can use them on kitchen sinks. You can use them to do a whole bathroom like we just talked about. The one thing here in North Carolina that you do have to do is you have to have at least one two inch vent going through the roof. For me as a rule, I like to take one vent through the roof for every stack that I have. All right, so as far as where do I stand on these, like I said before earlier in the video, I use them a lot, I do. I've talked to other business owners, I've talked to plumbing inspectors, and in my career, I've not seen any of these fail. The way I see it is there is a lot of work that goes in to writing plumbing code, determining what works and what doesn't. These things are approved. I kind of equate it to, I imagine back when PVC came on the scene and people were using cast iron, they probably didn't want to use the PVC. Or when PEX came on the scene and people were using copper, no one wanted to use the PEX because it was new, it was something different. All right, like I said, I know there's a lot of strong opinions about air admittance valves. Some people love them. Some plumbers think that other plumbers that use them shouldn't even have air to breathe. So. In the comments, keep it productive and we'll see you on the next video.